ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだunaware that Whitebeard had become a teacher at Yua. But as soon as Izuku felt a presence familiar with Haki, he felt that this person moving close to the dorms was familiar with him. So as he woke up from his bed, he left Yamato to sleep as he walked down the halls of the dorms and entered the kitchen. Sitting down at the table with a small cup of tea, he took a sip of it as he felt around for the presence that seemed familiar to him. In the time it took for him to get downstairs as well as make himself a cup of tea, the person who was vaguely familiar with him had arrived outside the doors. As he stared at the doors of the dorms he watched as the person who entered was someone he definitely knew. So when were you going to tell me that you had taken down an opponent not even this all might could take down? A familiar voice called out. Nugate-san? Izuku asked. Tears brimming as he saw the mountain of a man. That's me, brat. He he. I can't believe I was given a chance to come back to life, but I was surprised that I was brought here. Tell me, were you able to find some help? Whitebeard asked as he sat down at the table. I was, although. Me and Yamato left during the sports festival in order to take down all for one. Izuku said as he messed with his fingers. I guess that's to be expected. I wouldn't want my successor to sit on his ass and twiddle his thumbs whilst a very dangerous man was out there who only wanted to cause chaos," Whitebeard said, stroking his crescent-shaped mustache. So what happened after you died? Izuku asked as Whitebeard chuckled. Ha! Huh, nothing much, everything just turned black for me. But I woke up in front of this short woman who had these weird horns sticking up from her head. Although I did hit on her whilst I was reaching the highest point of age, she asked for an autograph in order to send me here. Whitebeard said, chuckling. I guess even in hell you have fans. Izuku muttered as Newgate couldn't help but laugh. You still haven't gotten the better of that muttering of yours? I would have thought you'd gotten better since the last time we'd met one another. Whitebeard said, belly laughing. Well it's hard to get past my eccentricities. Izuku said, blushing. Well, let's table that conversation for another time. Did you finally seal the deal with that woman of yours? Whitebeard asked, with a knowing smirk. I did. Yes, Izuku said, blushing even more. I heard from Marco that you both were willing to do one another in the kitchen. I thought I told you that when you decide to take a woman you make sure it's in the room. Whitebeard scolded. It wasn't my idea. It was Yamato's. She wanted to know how it felt like to get caught in the act, although it caused me to pass out, Izuku said, as Whitebeard laughed even more. As the two got to work on recalling things that the other had missed, Izuku informed Whitebeard that his subordinate, Blackbeard as he goes by now, had managed to take some more devil fruits from two other pirate captains, and with that information Whitebeard knew that Luffy would become strong enough to take on his old friend. They also talked about things that Izuku had managed to learn whilst within Yua grounds, and he was happy to hear that Izuku's time within the school had increased his confidence in himself. Not that Yamato was working overtime in their world just to increase his own confidence to take on threats. Speaking of the girl, where is she? I could have sworn she was here with you. Whitebeard asked, as Izuku pointed upstairs. Oh, she's still asleep? Whitebeard asked, getting a nod. Good, come with me. I need to see how far you've improved that devil fruit power I gave to you is. Whitebeard said, as they both moved out of the building. The two stood across from one another in one of the training gyms as they activated the powers of their shared devil fruit. Whitebeard had watched as Izuku had noticeably gotten slightly taller when he activated the power of the quake quake fruit. 
the boy had increased slightly in height as he threw a punch into the air causing it to crack as a massive crater was formed. He then did the same as he showed that his crater was much larger than Izuku's by comparison, and he smiled when he did the comparison. Izuku's crater was just slightly smaller than his own, meaning that Izuku had learned a lot of how to utilize his power. They then decided to forego the whole devil fruit power usage, as they switched into the utilization of Haki as they stood across from one another. Whitebeard then decided to see how well Izuku could withstand the whole conqueror's Haki that he taught the boy early on in his training. Kaido had done many things in the past, but teaching Izuku how to utilize the power of conqueror's Haki was not something he'd done, so he was expecting Izuku to immediately fall to the ground as he struggled to withstand his Haki powers. He was definitely surprised when the boy was able to counter his own conqueror's hacky with his very own. Their hackies clashed with one another as a small shockwave was made from the two clashing, and Izuku's body slowly was pushed back, but he stayed as still as possible with a serious look. As soon as Whitebeard decided to call off the battle of conqueror's hacky, they both dissipated. You've trained yourself well enough to handle most villains, that's good kid, now I need to see how well you fight against someone who uses their full strength without their powers. Whitebeard said, as he got into a combat stance, Izuku mimicked the same. Without a second to prepare, the two launched towards one another their speed making them blurs. Whitebeard threw a swift right hook towards Izuku, as the young man dodged the blow throwing a side kick at Whitebeard's side. The older and much more experienced man had caught the leg before tossing Izuku into the air as he started to fall. Izuku had decided to just roll with the fall as Whitebeard had gone to throw another punch towards his stomach. Izuku tanked the hit as he used his arms to wrap around the man before sending a kick into Whitebeard's face. This caused the older man to skid across the ground, still standing. He smirked at the boy before the two disappeared once again as they clashed in the sky. Whitebeard had thrown a kick this time, using his much taller frame in order to take advantage of Izuku's short stature. But it appeared that the young man had done the same, except in reverse. He used his short stature to be able to dodge the attack before he sent a punch towards the kneecap that was swiftly dodged. Moving faster than the eye could predict, the two moved about the gym as if they were dancing as they dodged and countered attacks the other would throw. As they moved further inside of the gym, they never noticed when it happened, but robots had come out and started to attack the two of them without remorse, and putting their backs to one another, they teamed up to take the robots down, not that they could take on an overwhelming force without their devil fruit powers but they sure as hell made sure that they made it look as though they could do it without using any kind of powers. Izuku would grab a robot before tossing it behind himself that Whitebeard caught in his large hand and used it as a bludgeon in order to take down even more robots. By the time the two were done, they had managed to defeat the entire entourage of robots before they returned back to their original fight. They clashed arms as a miniature crater formed between the two as they glared into one another's eyes. Activating their conqueror's hacky, they watched as their arms slowly moved away from one another as they put more pressure into their strength. And within seconds, they noticed something that not many people who were watching from a camera couldn't. A small black sphere with red and black coloring, as well as black lightning sprouting outward around them had formed. As they glared at one another harder, Izuku felt himself put all his willpower and determination into his body pushing with all his strength. Whitebeard himself though, pressed a little harder as he smirked at his protege. He couldn't believe the lengths he'd gone since he'd died. He was showing that he could protect this world even without a quirk. He was proud to see how far Izuku had gone from being the short and frail looking boy to now being as confident as he could become and almost as strong as his prime. Deciding to end the whole clash immediately, Whitebeard had pressed further as he watched Izuku get blasted back towards a nearby building. Moving faster than the camera could see, he soon reappeared behind Izuku as his body was still rippling with the power of the older man. 
Whitebeard then grabbed the boy by the scruff of the neck as massive gusts of winds blasted past him before he rose Izuku from it and slammed him into the ground. There was a crater there that made a small Izuku shape as his voice could be heard from inside. Can you give me the name of the star I'm looking at? Because she's really pretty. Izuku mumbled as his voice echoed through the ground. That's not a star kiddo, that's your woman. Get him back into the nurse's office Yamato, Whitebeard said, as Yamato reached in and plucked Izuku from the ground like he was a vegetable. Hey, I picked up an Izuku, I wonder what else I can pick up. Yamato said, ironically being very flirtatious. It's Yamato? She's got really soft hands. Izuku mumbled before passing out. Class 1 were back in their classroom. They had a long summer that allowed them the time to recover from their long year, and with the fall of All Might and some other issues as of late, they really needed to get the hang of their careers earlier on. So in order to set the class up for success earlier on in their lives, Principal Nezu had stated to the homeroom teacher of the class to take them to their provisional license exams. Their final exams were the final test the principal had given them in order to see if they would be ready for them. And he wasn't disappointed in them, not in the slightest. All right, class, we will be heading out to a certain place for your provisional licensing exams. Don't ask questions because we need you all to be ready. A storm is coming from the villains, and we need you all to be ready for when it comes," Aizawa said, as the class mutely nodded. On other news, we will be making this exam extremely low-key and most importantly, private. Nobody should know that we are doing a provisional licensing exam today. So on that note, head outside, get into your hero costumes, and make you a proud of allowing this to happen to you all. Aizawa said, as he crawled back into his sleeping bag and rolled out of the classroom. With the students gathering their hero suits and other things, they all left the area and towards the many buses that would take them to the exams. Climbing aboard the class as a whole had decided to keep quiet so as to not earn the wrath of their homeroom teacher. They had seen how tired he'd been as of late, and they didn't wish for him to send that wrathful hatred their way. Not one bit, so they whispered to one another as they passed the time before they would arrive at the place where the provisional license exams would be taking place. As the bus carried on towards the location of where the provisional exams were taking place, the students conversed with one another amicably. They had all talked about gossip surrounding the school, and they were not one to stop worrying about it. But there was one specific rumor that was moving about the rumor mill around the school, and that surrounded who their new teachers would be based on the information that was placed on their schedules. An advanced lesson on hacky training and many other powers that they weren't aware of. About five hours of driving later, the UA students of class 1A had finally arrived at the building where their exams would be taking place. Stepping out of the bus as soon as it had stopped and opened their doors. The students of Class 1A of Yua High School found themselves at a very large building. Many other students from other schools were making their ways towards the massive building where their exams were taking place. Walking over towards the opening doors of the building, Class 1A were accosted by some students who came by. Hey, are those the students who were at Camino Ward? A random student questioned. Hey, yeah you're right, we have seen them before. Another student said. The two who arrived were wearing their respective hero suits. One was wearing green slight armoring as he had black hair that was messy if anything else. The girl had been wearing a blue tight jumpsuit that gave little to the imagination of those looking her direction. She had light tan colored hair and blue eyes as she smiled at the group of one of students, but there was something hidden behind that smile. Nice to meet you both. We are indeed from the Kamino Ward incident. My name is Midoriya Izuku, and this is Yamato. Izuku introduced himself and Yamato. At least you guys are kind as well. Name's Yoshindo, and I hope to become great allies later on the line. The young man said, shaking Izuku's hand. The moment their hands were shaking Izuku did notice a faint increase of grip strength as the young man was gauging his opponent. So Izuku naturally just allowed him to think that he was not that much of a threat to this young man, he would find out in battle. 
Entering the building had everyone pause for a second before they were given a written test before entering the practical. After a fair few hours of written testing, everyone was moved into the practical fighting arena separated by differing schools. Yua was standing in their small corner as they were thinking up plans for how to survive the first part of the licensing exams. Izuku particularly was not listening to the rules being placed as he thought up a plan. His mind was going a million miles an hour. He wanted to make sure that everything he did was not going to damage those nearby, and he wanted to show his power but let those who'd watch him that he had its full strength under control. And not too much longer later, the battle was beginning. Izuku appeared with the rest of his class as they stood in a rocky area. He knew that something was off when multiple schools had foregone attacking one another and instead teaming up and heading his direction. Looking to Yamato, it appeared she noticed their movements as well and was now informing everyone what was happening. As soon as Izuku found Yoshindo standing on top of a cliff, he found the young lad staring down at him with a malicious grin on his face. Sorry Yua, but this is where you all fail. Try again next year, he said, as he and his allies started throwing the orange balls in their direction. Not if there's anything I can do about it, Izuku called out. He thrusted his fist out into the open air as Yo and the rest of his classmates watched as the world itself featured a few cracks in the air. As soon as that happened the world around them all started to crack all over the place as rocks started to be blasted apart. Once the attack finished Izuku had jumped into the air and was now looking at the school kids that attacked his own. It was a mix of Ketsubutsu and another school, say I if he remembered correctly. Sorry Shindo-san. But I believe it's time to show you the real power behind my quirk, Izuku said, as he pulled his hands into the air as if grabbing it. Quake quake power, reformation, Izuku called out, as his fingers pulled down on the imaginary world and everything suddenly began to spin. As soon as his fingers had flown down near his knees, he had started to fall towards the ground. Landing on one of the platforms he'd created, Izuku decided to leave Yamato and the rest so that he could take down other schools. Rushing through the rocky zone, he had began to look for opponents who could show him a good time in terms of battle. If there was anything that Izuku had learned in the other world where Yamato originally came from, it was to be a battle maniac. That was the only thing he'd ever agree with Bakugo on, at least in the past. But now was not the time to worry about him. Now was the time to worry about passing this test in order to survive the practical. Yamato was now all alone with the girls of Class 1A, and she was definitely feeling the presence of nearby opponents making their way towards them. Luckily because of her observation hacky abilities, she was able to pinpoint their locations so that Momo could create weapons of mass destruction in order to defeat them easily. Unfortunately for the girls, they were placed on the highest point of the arena and were now public enemy number one. Had it not been for Izuku's presence on the ground after all, since he was near the floor, he was going to be that enemy. But it didn't stop others from attempting to get up there, though. Izuku ran through the buildings of the broken city zone. He had taken down multiple opponents with a smile on his face. It was here that he heard the intercom state that a young man by the name of Yurashi Inasa was moving on to the next practical test part. Increasing his speed, he made sure to appear and disappear around certain students from Shikesu High and others building up his count of students he'd defeated. He was about to run off to take down a few other schools when he heard the intercom shout out his name. Will Midoriya Izuku please exit the arena? You have already maxed out the amount of students you can eliminate, a voice called out, causing Izuku to fall through the floor. Once he was in an area without anyone else present, he found himself in the waiting area for students who'd passed the exams, and he was surprised with how many people weren't here. Currently it was only him and about three others, and Yamato was there too. Somehow, she was able to defeat many more people than he was although considering the fact he had managed to get her and others to safety might have made them a target, he wouldn't take back his protective stance any day. So now here he waited until the next part of the exam was set to begin. All that needed to be done 
was wait for the rest of the students, and from what he was watching they were all doing extremely well. That was until he saw a very familiar face moving around with the Ketsubutsu students. They had shortened ash blonde hair, ruby red eyes that glared at anything and everything they could see. But there was something off about him now. He wasn't growling and scowling at everything around himself. He was more at peace with himself, so much so that Izuku felt a thought coming to mind so fast he almost didn't catch it himself. Did you really come here? Bakugo? If so, did you get over your ego and inferiority and superiority complexes? Izuku kept a very close eye on Bakugo for the remainder of the first event. He had been watching the boy as he took out students from other schools. He had been very meticulous about how he took them down as well. He never killed any of them, but that was beside the point. Bakugo was a villain that Izuku saw back in the OSJ, so what was he doing here in an event where students attempt to get their provisional hero license? That would be found out soon enough as the boy was walking towards Izuku, having gotten enough points to pass on to the next part of the exams. He was walking towards Izuku's direction when he finally took notice that Izuku was watching him from afar. Giving a smug smirk he walked over to the boy as he stood in front of him now, if there was a tension before he showed up, it was not noticeable, but now, it was as if a hot knife could cut through it and chaos would ensue, and Izuku was openly glaring at Bakugo with a fiery passion. What are you doing here, Bakugo? I thought you left with the League of Villains, Izuku demanded. What am I doing here? Well, I'm here to learn how to become a hero, unlike you. Bakugo retorted with a chuckle. Oh yeah. And tell me, do heroes attack other hero schools? Do heroes bully others for an entire decade of their life? Do heroes kill others because of the fact that they don't like a certain part of them? Izuku questioned his tone becoming more and more furious. What can I say? At least someone likes who I am. And unlike you, I will be getting my provisional hero license. Bakugo said, as Izuku stared at him for a moment. What school are you going to at the moment? Surely, you'd be able to tell me that much right, Izuku asked, as Bakugo glared at him now. Why should I tell you? I don't owe you anything, Bakugo said, angrily. Actually, you do. Ten long years of abuse. Ten long years of mental abuse as well as suicide baiting on the last day of school last year. And don't make me forget the fact that you joined villains instead of attempting to become a hero, Izuku said, as Bakugo glared hard. I don't owe you shit. Can't you take a joke? Bakugo asked, as Izuku punched him in the face. None of what you told me was a joke. What if I actually taken your advice about a year and a half ago, huh? Jumping off a roof and praying for a quirk in the next life. Does that sound familiar? Izuku roared. When this day is over, you are dead. I don't care about whatever power you think you have. You will always just be a quirkless little Deku. Bakugo said walking away. Izuku stared at the boy's back as he walked away with a bruised ego. Pulling up his phone, he made sure to call Aizawa about this conversation he'd had. He really needed to know how Bakugo got inside the provisional licensing exam, because as of right now, he was still registered as a villain to the entirety of Japan as a whole, and he shouldn't be capable of entering any other hero schools because of that. For the last time Mrs. Joke, I am not marrying you, Aizawa said, as Mrs. Joke stared at him with puppy dog eyes. Really? What about if I did something for you, Tilda? She asked, as Aizawa sighed in exasperation. He was suddenly interrupted by a phone call. This is Aizawa Shoda, what can I do for you? Aizawa asked, as he heard Izuku's angered voice. What do you mean he's in the provisional licensing exams? Aizawa asked, alarmed. All right, I will talk to the proctor soon enough, Aizawa said, before hanging up his phone. What was that about? And why are you looking like you've seen a ghost? Joke asked, as she looked concerned. Bakugo Katsuki is in the provisional licensing exams. He was last seen with the League of Villains, and he should be treated as such, Aizawa said, as Joke just stared at him. What are you talking about? He was supposed to be on the list for the provisional licensing exams, Joke said, as Aizawa glared in her direction. What? 
he asked, as Joke explained everything. Whilst Aizawa was having his issues with Joke and her explanation, Izuku was keeping an eye on Bakugo from afar. There was no way he'd be getting a provisional license from the HPSC. He was already branded a villain. Especially after the news report about his mother being missing. Not only that, but they apparently found ashes that held traces of her DNA. And they weren't normal ashes. They were ashes that had faint traces of nitroglycerin-like sweat in them. So in order to protect the people of this exam, Izuku made sure to keep a very close eye on the boy to make sure he doesn't kill someone else. Once the second part of the licensing exam began, Izuku went off and started to rescue the people trapped in rubble. He was thanking everything about Whitebeard's teaching through observation hacky on the next level. He was capable of finding them in the rubble of destroyed buildings, and as he pulled them out, he checked them for injuries. Once he patched the ones he could help a lot for, he brought them to the tent where all the heroes and heroines who were healers were located before heading out to get more. He sent out observation Haki in order to track Bakugo and he was able to find him moving around with a few Ketsubutsu kids allowing Izuku to find more of the civilian test makers. By the time that half of the fake civilians were brought to the tent, there was a rumbling before a wall broke on the other side of the arena. It was Gang Orca as he broke through acting as though he was the villain for this test. He was supposed to see if there would be students who'd move away from their objective of protecting the civilians. And he sure did find one specific one who went out for him. Bakugo Katsuki threw the civilians he was holding and blasted over to him. Unfortunately for the boy, however, his explosions had placed new burns on their arms, so he was docked points for that. It wasn't much longer before two more students, one from Yue and another from Shikesu, arrived and assisted Bakugo with defeating the villain for the test. All three were so out of whack that they were getting angered at one another for interrupting the other's attack. And as the trio worked together, albeit without any cohesion, they were buying everyone else the time to evacuate the civilian test makers out of the area. By the time the last civilian was taken out of the equation, Izuku had given them off to Yamato so that she could bring them to safety. Izuku decided to rush over towards Gang Orca to see what was taking so long to defeat him, and he was completely and utterly disappointed in the trio who attacked the number 9 hero. On the ground the trio were paralyzed from the sonar attack that Gang Orca had launched at them early on in their fight. Bakugo was letting out a stream of curses that would make a sailor laugh at how many he was using multiple times. Shoto was just getting angry from how Yurashi was countering his flames, and Yurashi himself was getting annoyed from Bakugo who was screaming explicatives the entire time and not helping the situation at all. Jumping into the fray, he launched a kick towards Gang Orca who could only block the attack because of his own sonar passive ability. When Izuku's kick landed on the gauntlets he wore, they broke to pieces whilst also creating micro-fractures within his arms as he shook them. Damn, didn't think that one of you U.S. students would damage my arms that much, Gang Orca stated as he shook his arms. Well, I need to make sure that you don't defeat them too fast, Izuku said, using Conqueror's hacky immediately. And for everyone present they could only see a small shockwave come from Izuku's body as most of Gang Orca's men fell to the ground unconscious. Looking around himself as the power of Izuku's glare had seemingly glanced off of his body, he turned back to Izuku with a confused expression. Was that supposed to hurt me or something? He asked, pouring water over his face and head. No, that was to get the small fry out of our fight. That will need to wait for another day, Izuku said, as an alarm blared to life. The provisional licensing exams are done. Please return to your specific schools and wait for the results. Make sure to use the restroom and get a drink since it will take a while. The proctor of the exams called out. Well damn, I guess I wouldn't be able to fight you anymore today. Well here's to say that you can join my agency when it's time for your work studies. Gang Orca said, with a bow before leaving. It was nice to meet you, Gang Orca sir, Izuku said, with a wave. See you later Midoriya Kun. And I hope to see a hero like you make their waves through the ranks later on in life. 
gang orca stated as he disappeared through the hole he'd made. As the students from all the other schools in the area rested up for the results Izuku made sure to keep an eye on Bakugo. He didn't know what the young man was doing by being here exactly, and Aizawa never really gave him a reason as to why the boy was at this provisional licensing exam in the first place. He was about to exit the building and onto the field when he felt his phone vibrate in his pocket. Picking it up and looking at the message, he glared at the screen as if it took his lunch back in middle school. Putting the phone away to see what his score was on the overall exam, he watched as the proctor stated that their names will be given a ranking on how well they did. And looking at his name, he found it to be in the top 10 of the students who passed the exams and got their provisional hero license. Looking further down the list, he found that Bakugo had gotten in, albeit barely passing the exam. He was near the bottom around 56th place. Meanwhile, Izuku was around the top 5 at 4th place. Needless to say, Izuku could hear Bakugo fuming in the background as he growled to himself about how he was supposed to win this stupid test. When he left the building, Izuku found himself and his class getting on the bus to head back to Yua. He was looking at his phone again as he stared at the specific message that Aizawa had given him at the moment, and he seriously couldn't believe his eyes when he read it over and over again, hoping and praying that it wouldn't be saying what he thought it was, especially considering the evidence they had on hand for Mitsuki Bakugo's death, especially because of the ashes that had nitroglycerin inside. The message read as follows. Midoriya-kun, I don't know how to explicitly tell you this, but I will just be blunt on this endeavor with you, considering your past with Bakugo. Do not provoke him. He is on probation at Ketsubutsu High School, and I have a feeling that he is using the fact that he is a villain to use their rehabilitation abilities within their school to become a hero. But that's not all. Apparently, there is a group of quirk supremacists who are assisting his rise to heroism. I can only hope that you are not near the boy at this moment because Joke just told me that there was nothing we could do to save him, other than allowing him to get what he wants, or killing him outright. Izuku was taking out the trash one day after the provisional licensing exams. He was thinking about who to work under for the work studies since his grades could take the small lowering whilst he was gone. He was about to throw the trash away into the trash can outside when he saw a weird-looking face sticking out of the wall. It looked at him with a happy smile before Izuku just looked kind of creeped out before he shook his head before asking a question. Um, who are you? Izuku asked. Don't worry about my name. I just wanted to see the guy who left Yua and came back after a hard-fought mission to defeat that Kamino ward villain. The face said, causing Izuku to bristle. Are you stuck in that wall? Izuku asked, worriedly. Don't worry, I'm just using my quirk to look at you through the wall. And I gotta say, you don't look like the rumors say. You look even more adorable than what they tell about you, the face said, happily smiling. Okay, but why did you want to see what I looked like? Izuku asked, his face resembling a confused puppy. Because people said that you looked more akin to an adult with how you fought. But no matter, you will find out who I am in class today. I hope you're ready to meet your senpai later on today the young man said, before disappearing back into the wall. Huh, strange guy. I wonder what his name is. I feel as though I should know him based on how he looked. I guess I will find out later on today, Izuku said, tossing the trash away. From afar in the background a young man with the same expression on his face watched from around the corner with a smirk. Sir would love to meet this guy. I can't wait to have him be showed off to him. The young man thought to himself before jogging away and back towards Yua. The next day the students of class 1A were settled into their classroom as they thought about what the foundational heroics class will be about this time, and they weren't disappointed when Aizawa had entered the classroom as he spoke to them about how they were about to begin their work studies this year. Not to mention how they were getting this early considering the fact that they don't usually give first-year students provisional licenses until their second year. But he then introduced them to the fact that their work studies will be taking place for however long the hero they intern with will wish. 
They would need to take part in any action that the agency decides to complete meaning they will get the experience that real heroes get on the field. With that all said and done, these three will tell you all what the work studies are like. You three can come in now, Aizawa called out, before hiding himself behind his desk. As soon as those words were uttered, the door opened to reveal the young man that Izuku saw the face of the other day, followed by a girl with light blue-colored hair as well as blue eyes, and a young man who was taller than her who had indigo-colored hair and dark eyes as he looked timid. He was so thrown off by their looks that he looked to Yamato to gauge if they were really strong or not. She gave him a nod of approval as he sighed in relief as to how strong they were as a whole, and he heard the trio talk. Well I already met one of you yesterday when they were taking out the trash, but my name is Tagata Mirio, and I am the hero Lamillion. The blonde boy with a cowlick called out happily. My name is Hado Nejire, and my hero name is Nejire Chan. Nice to meet you all. I would ask you all about your quirks as well as who you are, but we're on a timetable. The girl, Nejire said. It was silent for a bit before the last one. The indigo-haired young man just looked at the class before hiding behind Mirio as he mumbled his name. Amajiki Tamaki, and I am the hero Sun Eater. Nice to meet you. Can I please go home now? He both introduced and questioned. Denied. Mirio called out happily. He's so timid. The entire class called out the young man, Tamaki's antics. All right, class, these are the big three of you at. We are going to have a small battle outside in Jim Gamma. Now get your hero suits on and meet them out there, Aizawa said, leading the trio out the doors. Within minutes the class had followed suit, wondering how their day would possibly get better or worse with time. Although they never noticed nor heard the cackling coming from Principal Nezu's office as he watched them with their confident grins on their faces. I do love showing those overconfident students the pecking order. Come on, big three, it's time to show them why you are the strongest of the school, Mezu said, cackling as he tipped his tea onto the floor. As the entirety of Class 1A left the area to begin their battle against one of the big three students of Yua. Izuku was with Yamato thinking about everything this young man could possibly do against the class as a whole. Izuku knew that the boy was strong. He could easily tell that by his aura when he stood in front of the class. He changed into his gym uniform as he dressed himself to be similar to Whitebeard in homage to the man who gave him hope. He exited the changing room as he found himself and Yamato being the first two people on the field next to Aizawa. The man as quiet as possible as he slept on the bleachers nearby whilst they waited for their classmates. The rest of their class arrived in their gym uniform as well, and they found themselves standing in front of the big three who were also in their gym uniforms. Standing in the middle of the gym, they found themselves listening to Aizawa as the man told them about how Mirio was the strongest student they had within UA as a whole. He then told the class that they will be fighting him, just so that they could get an idea about how hard the work studies they will take part on will be. And within moments the class stood in front of Mirio as the young man was stretching in his uniform. All right, so is there any rules to this kind of spar, Aizawa-sensei? Mirio called out, no. All's fair in love and war. Make sure that you teach them the lesson of how harsh the work studies actually will be. Aizawa said, leaning down on the ground in the background. Well, who's first? Mirio asked, with a smile on his face. Gyro went first as she sent a lot of sound waves at him with her ear lobes. But as soon as they were about to reach him, he suddenly disappeared from sight, leaving his clothing on the ground. Izuku could hear Aizawa sigh in the background as he felt out for where Mirio was and once he got a lock on the young man's location Izuku looked in the direction of Gyro. Well look who's first, Mirio called out swinging a fist towards the girl's neck. He couldn't get the attack off as he saw Izuku throwing an attack of his own at Mirio, who just disappeared into the ground once more. Gyro looked at him with shock as well as fear before she and some others moved towards him and Yamato in terms of the fact that they could sense where Mirio was located. Don't lower your guard, he can phase through anything, Izuku warned. 
Then let's freeze the ground, Todoroki said, before he felt his stomach caving in on himself. I think that would be a very not nice thing to do, Todoroki-san, Mirio called out before falling back into the ground. Fifteen minutes of fighting later, the only people still standing in the middle of the training field were Izuku and Yamato. With the duo being able to cover their backs, they had been more than capable of finding where Mirio was located with Observation Haki. And whenever he came up from the ground, the two would be there to counter his attack before he could even come out of the ground. By the time the class's time was almost over, he called the fight off because it would be just a draw due to Mirio not being capable of leaving the ground and Izuku and Yamato being incapable of stopping the young man unless he ran out of breath. As you all could see, Midoriya and Yamato were the only ones who were prepared enough to fight Mirio. Can any of you all tell me why this is? Aizawa asked. Because they have some kind of ability to sense him. Yayurazu questioned. Is this true? Aizawa asked. Yes, in the world where Yamato originally came from. We learned an ability to sense where one could be located. No matter if they hide their presence or if they are just that good at sneaking around. It's called Observation Hacky, and it can allow you to see who and what is attacking you before it even happens, Yamato said, with a smirk. Well, I wouldn't state anything less of my two students. A gruff voice called out from behind the wall. Whitebeard, what are you doing here? Aizawa asked. Looking at the nine-foot-tall man, I just wanted to see what the ruckus was all about. And it turned out that my students were showing off some of their skills for the first time. I can't help but watch it with my own eyes. Eraserhead, Whitebeard happily said, pulling out a large barrel of sake. The students around them all stared at the tall man with concern as well as awe. They had never seen someone who was taller than all might naturally and to see this man do it so casually made them wonder about what else he could do. But that was for later, as the big three decided to leave the area and make themselves scarce. Izuku however noticed how Mirio was looking at him for a moment before walking away from the area. Izuku looked back to Whitebeard as he talked to his mentor about how he used the Gura Gura no Mai and asked if there were safer ways to use it. Over the rest of the day, the students of class 1 were thinking about who to join for their work studies, and Izuku was not present in the classroom as he was training how to use his Gura Gura, no Mai without causing too much damage to the area. It was here that Mirio would come up to the duo as he watched them both use their earthquake powers to their maximum, and he could see just how outmatched he was in pure strength as well as control over his own power. Rushing over to the two, he stood nearby to watch their fight gaining the attention of Whitebeard, who stopped the fight immediately. Why are you here, and what do you want? Whitebeard questioned. Oh, don't worry about me, sir. I just wanted to ask Midoriya something. Mirio said, as Whitebeard nodded. Is there something you wanted? Izuku asked, as Mirio nodded. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that my mentor, Sir Naitai, he used to be All Might's sidekick, and he wanted to know if you'd like to be his intern for a work study. Mirio questioned, as Izuku thought about it. Well, it could help me with gaining more experience against opponents who are more into the investigative side of heroism, Izuku thought to himself. Can I have some time to think about this Tagata Senpai? Izuku asked, as the young man nodded. I will give you until the end of the week, Kohai. See you later, Mirio said, running off. Good kid, now let's see that full power of yours, Whitebeard called out. A week soon passed as Izuku finally came to a conclusion about Mirio's proposition. He was looking for his senpai when he ran into Nejire who was rushing around the place searching for a couple of people. When she came across him, she asked him a bunch of questions which he answered in earnestness. He then questioned her about Mirio's whereabouts as she informed him about the young man's location. Running down the halls to find the older boy, he soon found himself in a small meeting room between him and a gaunt man who appeared to be All Might. Are you ready, young Tagata? All Might questioned. I'm ready, sir. Mirio's voice called out from the other side of the door. Here goes nothing, Izuku muttered to himself. Knock, knock. Who is it? Mirio's voice called out. It's me, Tagata-senpai, 
Midoriya Izuku, Izuku called out. Oh, come in then, Mirio's voice said. Entering the room, Izuku found himself staring at the symbol of peace and Mirio, who were looking a little concerned at the moment. As Izuku looked at Mirio, he showed him the piece of paper that Aizawa had given him about who to intern with. Mirio saw the name on it and gave Izuku a big hug as he happily jumped around with him. Oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to show you around the city as your senpai on the field, Mirio said, happily. Senapi, I should really get back to my class. I'm sorry for disturbing your conversation with all might, Izuku said, as he rushed away from the room. You could have handled that situation better you know, Whitebeard's voice called from another room. I know, I just don't know if he knows about my gaunt form, All Might said, as Whitebeard chuckled. If he knew about it already, then he hasn't told anyone about it. Whitebeard said, slapping the man's back. I guess you're right, All Might said, before moving back to Mirio. Down the hall Izuku was having an existential crisis as he felt as though he should have asked the number one hero for an autograph. But shaking his head, he needed to get back to class. He wanted to see who Yamato would be going to for a work studies. Her strength and other attributes were completely off the charts. So the fact that she needed to learn from another hero was not something that was lost on him. He arrived in the classroom to find everyone looking at her with the most pitiful expressions that he'd ever seen before. Can someone tell me what is going on? Izuku asked as Yamato rushed to him. Hey, who did you choose to intern under for the work studies? Yamato asked, happily. Um, I chose Sir Naitai. What did you choose? Izuku asked, as she turned her paper around. Izuku stared at the paper for a second, blinking his eyes before rubbing them. He grabbed the piece of paper for a second to read over her choices as he finally fell on the person Yamato chose. He could feel something in his brain pulling up some memories about his past and what he thought of this specific heroine. But the only thing that came to his mind was how he looked at Yamato's thighs and noticed that she needed some more muscle on them. Looking back to the paper, he had no idea why this heroine would want her. She was infamous for being a very solitary heroine on the field. So why had Yamato chosen to intern under the rabbit heroine, Mirko, for her work studies? Izuku left the Yue grounds as he prepared to use the train to make his way over to Sir Naitai's office within downtown Nagasaki. He was on the path towards the train as he came across Mirio Tagata his senpai as the young man was walking to the train as well. The two gave each other a nod of approval to one another before making their way together as they talked about their classmates' choices for work studies. The two were so engrossed in their conversation that they had unconsciously made their way to Sir Naitai's office whilst talking to one another. Izuku had used observation hacky in order to figure out the pathway that Mirio was taking and prevented them from bumping into others. They arrived just outside the building as Mirio began to talk about his mentor in Naitai. The man was apparently someone who prided himself on being capable of making a good joke as well as bringing smiles to everyone. Something that Izuku really appreciated with the hero as the man was someone who used to be All Might's sidekick. As the two entered the building, they had run into Bubble Girl who had been at the receptionist's desk for the moment as Centipter had arrived as well. The two sidekicks of Naitai had also said their hellos to Mirio as the young intern had given them both smiles. Making their way up the stairs to the fifth floor of the building, Mirio looked back at Izuku with a smile on his face as he gave Izuku a stern-toned voice. All right, from here on out, it's just you and your humor. If you can make Sir Naitai laugh or even chuckle, then that will get you a surefire way into his agency. It's how I became a member myself, Mirio said, smirking. Well, not that I haven't done that before, but I guess I should have looked up some jokes in order to get people laughing. Izuku muttered as Mirio chuckled. Well, the room is down the hall on the right. He will be expecting you, Midoriya Kun. I hope that you can join us this month for the work studies since they last indefinitely, Mirio said as he sat down on a chair nearby. Leaving the young man to his thoughts, Izuku walked closer to the door as he knocked on it. He heard movement inside as the voice inside called for him to enter inside of it. 
Opening the door, Izuku found himself being slightly intimidated by Sir Naitai, as the man was staring at Izuku with such an intensity that Izuku accidentally let out a quip. If you look at me like that any longer, I might get the wrong ideas, sir. Izuku blurted out as Sir stared at him for a few moments longer. Nice try on the joke, but I would give it about a 6 out of 10 for how you clearly accidentally blurted it out. But we will work on it. Night I said, before walking over and stamping the papers. You will begin tomorrow, be prepared to be training to the maximum as well as doing paperwork. You will need it, Sir Night I said, as he let Izuku leave the room. Izuku left the office in a slight daze. He hadn't thought that him blurting out those words would have caused the man to give him a 6 out of 10 for trying. Mirio had looked over to see Izuku walking towards him and was greatly concerned as the boy wasn't happy neither mad. He walked towards Izuku in concern as the young man had just shaken his head and gave him his papers. Mirio had gained a huge smile at that before he started to show the boy around like the senpai he was, based on his wording of it. By the end of the day, the two were sweaty considering they had decided to train with one another and Mirio had finally learned how Izuku had found him each time he went into the ground during their first fight earlier that week against Class 1A. Izuku informed Mirio that no matter who you are, nobody could get past a skill he learned in another world called Observation Hacky. Stated that anyone can learn it so long as they're around someone who uses Hacky long enough. By the time they got to their separate bedrooms, Izuku was pulling up his laptop in order to call up Yamato to see how she was doing. And as soon as he pulled up the call button, he found that he was getting a call from Yamato instantly. So, he opened it up and was clearly not expecting to see what was happening on the other side of the camera. Rubbing his eyes, he shook his head as he got a closer look through the pixels of the camera and found that his girlfriend was indeed suplexing Mirko. He let out a small chuckle as Yamato heard his voice from the camera as she laughed madly. You have got to try this with me later Izuku. This is so much fun, Yamato said as Izuku chuckled a little more. Well that's fun, how have you been doing over there? Izuku asked as Yamato went to talk about her day earlier. Izuku listened in silence as he listened to Yamato's tale of how she had met Mirko and managed to fight her to a stalemate. Izuku laughed at some moments that Yamato spoke about how Mirko had managed to beat her each time and how she proclaimed to the woman that she'd defeat her. Izuku felt himself relaxing after his admittedly long day of training with Mirio Tagata before looking behind Yamato, and he found Mirko actually lazing around the place where Yamato was located as if she was actually calm. When he questioned Yamato about it, the young Oni woman had just laughed him off, when she showed him what she was really doing. And he was surprised to find Mirko actually reading a fanfiction from one of the websites on the internet. You wouldn't happen to be thinking about adding someone else into our relationship, right? Yamato questioned softly. I don't know. Is there a reason as to why you're asking me this? Izuku asked as he looked concerned. Well, I don't know why, but I am feeling this weird feeling in my chest around Mirko and I feel as though I should act on it. Is that a bad thing? Yamato asked, as Izuku shook his head. That's perfectly fine, Yamato. It's just a crush that you're feeling at this point in time. You have a crush on her for a reason? Izuku asked, as Yamato gained a smile. Oh yeah, she apparently had crushed a villain's head between her thighs, and I had the feeling of wanting that done to me. Yamato said as Izuku just snickered. Well that's what happens to everyone when they see her do that. Everyone wants to have her do that to them because they think it's really hot. Izuku said, trying to find the right words. Would you like her to do that to you? Yamato asked. Nope, I know that my head won't handle that. I'm perfectly fine if you want to do that to me though. Izuku said, as he smiled at Yamato. Well I guess we'll have to do that when we both return from our work studies. Yamato said, with a smile as she turned off her connection. Izuku sat in his chair as he thought about the conversation about another partner in his life. He was perfectly content with Yamato in his life, and he didn't think that he could handle another woman in his life, much less another guy in his life that could do the same thing as him to Yamato. In fact, 
he imagined Yamato getting into a relationship with another male and he felt his heart break at that knowledge. So no other additional men into their relationship was what he wanted from that. But what about women? No, he didn't think that Yamato wanted to share him with other women. But he'd rather like to think that he could be polyamorous if he so chooses. Although the problem for him would be satisfying all those potential women that Yamato would like to bring. Leaving that thought for later, Izuku had gone to bed and dreamt about what he'd be doing to Yamato when the work studies were completed. Izuku was in the middle of a patrol with Mirio as they walked around Nagasaki. The two were learning about how to patrol around the area as pro-heroes at this point in time, Mirio being the older student as well as senpai for Izuku. Since the young man had been doing this since his second year in high school, he was showing Izuku the ropes of patrolling around the place. But there was a reason for the two to be on the streets patrolling around the alleyways and side streets. They were on a mission to see if they'd find Chisaki Kai, a man who Sir Naitai was investigating currently. Izuku and Mirio were walking past a small alleyway when Izuku felt something crash into his left leg, stumbling him slightly. Eep! A tiny voice called out. Huh? Izuku asked, looking down. He saw a little girl with light blue colored hair that bordered on white in terms of color alone. She was small probably wasn't fed enough food, and had ruby-red eyes that were very large. He knelt down to be her height as he smiled at her through the domino mask he wore on his face as he pulled his overcoat over his shoulders. He pushed a hand out slowly as the girl looked at it with concern as well as a large amount of fear in her eyes. Are you okay, little one? That fall was a little bad with your clothing style. Izuku said, as the little girl immediately grabbed his arm as he picked her up softly. Don't let me go, get me away from here, the little girl said, as she held onto his overcoat in a tight grip. Don't worry, I will get you out of here, Izuku said, as he followed Mirio away from the alleyway. The two hero students were incredibly unaware of the fact that a man had entered the alleyway searching for the little girl they had in their possession. Not only that, but he was looking furious at how the little girl had escaped from his sight. So, this was the end of this series. Stay tuned for next part of this series, and if you like this video don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.